Hey guys, how's it going? I'm at the wonderful allotment in the beautiful sunny day with the fresh air and the noise of dog barking over there. Um, right, I need a specific tool for the allotment. I need a knife that will do several different tasks and something caught my eye called a hori hori. It's a Japanese inspired knife. I think it means to cut hori hori but I'm not sure or to chop or slash or something like that. The reason I want a knife like that is a couple of reasons really. When I'm harvesting my cauliflowers, my broccoli, any of the thick stem plants like the beans etc I leave the roots in the ground so I have to cut the stem just slightly underground and leave the roots in and the stems on the broccoli and cauliflower they're literally like that they are like wood I don't want to twist the roots out I want to leave them in the ground I've tried several things nothing seems to work I always end up kind of trying to hold the plant waggling it around and shaving the root off but I've seen these hori horries they have a serrated edge which I think will be perfect for that task. I also want the hori hori because there's perennial weeds coming up in this plot that, have, that I'm hoping to get on top of in the next year or two. In order to aid that I need to cut the root as the plants come up like the merse tail, the bindweed. I need to put a knife in the ground, hold the plant and kind of cut it as deep as I can to remove as much of the root and stem as possible. That just weakens the root and you get rid of the weeds quicker. Um, and I also just want a general knife for cutting. So at the moment I've been using like three or four different tools around the plot. So I think this hori hori will just do more or less everything I need. So I'm going to make it with a leg sheath so I can have it in my leg and I can just use it around the plot all the time. And I'll show you what I've been using. So to try and cut the cabbages I've been using this like dodgy bread knife. It's got serrations there, serrations there but it's stainless steel, it's absolute garbage, it doesn't do anything. The secateurs, the roots are so thick, they won't, they won't even go around the cabbage and collies. My old bushcraft knife, I've been using that a lot on here, but it just doesn't cut wood, if you know what I mean. The only chance I've got with that is, is chopping, but you're just not getting a clean cut through the root. And I've also made that out of an old file, which is just kind of a really long mortise chisel type tool. And that's what I've been using to stab at the roots, to cut, to cut the roots of the weeds off. But the trouble is, that's, that's so narrow, I ended up, I'm just kind of sawing through the ground, trying to find where the root is. Because I think the hori hori will, because it's so thin, it's just going to be able to side the weed faster because it's a wider blade. So I'm going to go back to the workshop and I'm going to start to make up this hori hori and I'll see you at the workshop. What I'll do is I'll come back when I've done this video, because I've got a cauliflower here that's ready for harvesting and I want to show you harvesting that and let's see if this hurry hurry does exactly what I want it to do I'll see you in the workshop I started thinking about what I was going to make this knife out of and I didn't want to just use a, a normal piece of just say carbon steel or stainless I, I just want it to look nice as you would and I thought stainless San Mai would be good. So a stainless jacket with a carbon core. That would be the best of both worlds. It's not going to rust. And that edge is going to, it's going to really perform. And I knew I had a San Mai billet, stainless San Mai billet. And that is there. And that is a 26 C3, C3 core in there. Nice little billet, but it's not big enough. This is the template I've come up with for the Hori Hori. So it's going to be about that size with a handle about yay and that's about the right size for what I need but when I lay it against the San Mai you can see it's just it, there's a lot of overlap on each side there but also when the flashings cut off this San Mai we're down to we're down to something quite a narrow billet I looked at different carbon steels like 1095, I looked at me HCRV2, that would make a really good hurry hurry. But looking through my pile and I found this piece of Damascus. Now this piece of Damascus, um, a guy, Mick French, he ordered a billet off me last year. I made him up the billet and this was the piece that was left on the end. I made up quite a large billet to compensate for any cracks or problems. And there was a piece left on the end which I then further forged out to this. 
It's not quite as thick as the billet I made for Mick. I'd say this is about 4.5 mil thick now. So I thought, yeah, that that that'll that'll be fine. You know, that'll make a good knife. So yesterday it was square. Yesterday I just put it back under the press and I just forged the tip out a little bit just to stretch the billet out a little bit. But you can see on there that that hori hori pattern now fits on there really nice. So I'm going to go with that. I can't remember, I honestly can't remember what sort of pattern this is. I think it might be a ladder, but I'm also hoping and I think it had a 26C3 core in it as well. So as I'm going to grind off both sides of the hori hori, like you know, like a dagger grind from the center line, I think as that 26C3 comes down on the edges, I think it'll look really special. I shall, when I finish the knife, I'm not too concerned about rusting and things like that because, I, you know, as long as you clean carbon steel after you've used it and you wipe it dry, it's not really going to rust. I'm going to protect this blade when it's finished with a coat of canuba wax, a nice thick coat of canuba wax, which should stop the surface rust anyway. But as I say, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. Well, I'm going to start on this now. So there's only, you can see there's only a small tang on that. I shall probably weld a tang, when, weld another piece on to make the tang a bit longer. It only needs to be about another two inches if that. Um, and I'm happy with the width of that blade. I'm going to put serrations almost to the front and about two thirds of the way down on one side and the other side will just be a straight cutting edge. So let's get on to it. Yeah, I cut it off the bar, I very quickly just cleaned it up on one side. That's the side with the centre line down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just profile this, put it on the grinder and just get the profile ground out. It's almost, as you probably see it, it's almost to the pencil line. There's a couple of places where it's creeping in just a little tiny bit. It's sort of right on there. I'm not worried about that. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical this. It's, it's a good thickness. It's about 4.5 I'd say, about 4.5 mil. Which is going to be perfect because it primarily it's a cutting knife. It's it's not a it's not a chopper. It's it's more of a cutting knife. It came out bang on template, really good. I'm going to put it on the surface grinder now. I'm going to have to get that rigged up on the on the 272, uh, and I'll I'll get this flattened out and get it parallel, and we'll see what thickness it ends up with. I'm assuming it's going to be about four millimeters. Now with the blade profiled and surface ground. I just found a little scrap of O on tool steel and what I've done is to extend the tang you can see the rough shape of the handle I'm not saying that's it yet but that's a rough idea of it um, I've, I've put a chamfer on each side of the tang extension and I've put a chamfer on the end of there and all that does it allows for some a nice a nice strip of weld to get in there to connect them two pieces Welding that tang piece on there, just there, will have obviously created like a hot spot along that area. So there's every chance that both sides of that weld are quite brittle, being tool steel. Now when I weld it on, as usually happens, there's a little bend now coming coming out from there. So it wouldn't do any really any harm at this point to, to soften that and get the spanner on it and then just, just pull it straight. This will be further uh, stress relieved and grain refined before it's heat treated anyway so it will get rid of any sort of stresses in there but I just don't want it breaking before then. So I'm just going to straighten it out. literally all it took. Hopefully that should be dead straight now. Take, take this out without losing my skin. Oh I've actually bent it a little bit too far there. So now I'll just pull it back a little bit.
Look at that, lovely. That'll do. Yeah, I'm just going to let that cool down now. Kind of uh, anneal a little bit. Um, then I'm going to partially grind some. I'm going to clean this uh, this area, this cutout area up here first. I'm going to put it on the file guide and just file that clean. Round these corners out a little bit. Stop any stresses during heat treating. Then I'm going to do some a partial bevel grind on this blade. Let's get about half the meat off this edge. Pattern looks quite nice. It's quite a wide ladder. But I'm just hoping it has got that core steel in the centre because I think it'll just look amazing. So after straightening that tang out, I've put it back on the surface grinder now and I've cleaned both sides up. Um, there is still that little surface imperfection just there. I actually, I didn't take much off, I only had to go two passes and it got rid of most of it. I'm not bothered about that. I am just going to leave it because it's for me. If it was for a customer, I'd probably have to carry on surface grinding. Possibly the blade would then get too thin and would either be making another billet or making a different knife or shortening it. If I was to knock them shoulders down, only about five millimetres, four or five mil, it would completely get rid of that. But I'm not bothered, it's for me, this knife. Um, we're not too fussy about things like that. Right, I'm going to do a partial bevel grind. I'm just going to go equidistance from each side and find the centre there and there. And I'm literally just going to run a sharpie line down it because I'm not too bothered about it being too precise at the moment. So I'm going from just from the tip to the centre, wherever that is. And then I'm going to just grind away from that line slightly. So if that's kind of the centre line, I'm probably going to grind there down and then leave a millimetre on the edge. That'll be enough thickness to cope with heat treating. I just dipped it a couple of times and I just thought, oh no, there is no core steel, but I've cleaned the edge up and can you see that little dark line in the center? It's got a core steel, yay, yay, yay. So that is 26 C3 in the middle of there, which is a beautiful steel, absolutely amazing steel. So that's hopefully what we're going to have on the edge now. I think this is going to look so cool. Get some grinding done. Protocol. Is that the word I'm looking for? Maybe it's parameters. It's probably more having a plan <laughs> and sticking to it. So I've done a partial grind on it. Okay. So you know I said I'd mark a centre line right down the centre. And then I would grind from leaving a millimetre on the edge, almost to that centre line. Well, I only put the line on one side, so I went out and I started grinding, and I noticed I hadn't done the line on the other side, the centre line, so I thought, yeah, I'll eyeball that. I can do that. You know, a guesstimate. Well, when you do that, it's sometimes, eight times out of ten, it's okay. This is one of the two times it's not. So I went over the, I went over the centre line, the imaginary centre line. And I could see it on the blade. So then I came in and I put the centre line in. So then I had to correct it back from the other side. So I've just gone a little, a tad, a tad too deep there. You can see from the plunge on that side that had the centre line marked on. There's a nice little plunge there right in the centre. Whereas that side, it's a bit scabby, it's rubbish. So to get around this, what all it means is on this side, when I put, when I come to fit the guard on, there'll be a slight gap there. And it now means another step. All I'll literally do is I will put this on the surface grinder. It just shows you, you know, you do something simple like not draw a line and it creates all that work. But that's where I am. It's a lovely shape that, isn't it? I think that is going to be a really, a really nice knife to work with. I really do. What I think I'm going to do, I don't think I'm going to go straight to the edge with this. So I think I'm going to I'm going to leave the edge about half a millimetre thick when I finish the grinding. I'm then going to put a slight secondary bevel on it because it will kind of bring that bevel in and then it will bring that bevel in again and out and it will make a much tougher, stronger edge. So that's that's what I've decided to do. And the edge of this is probably going to possibly be 62 HRC. So it's going to be a strong, hard blade. It won't really lose any edge retention. It should be really good for the tasks that I want it to. And it needs to be hard because it's going to be under the soil cutting. So it's going to be in contact with sand, abrasive things, you know, roots of plants. So if it's got a softish edge, 58, 59, it's going to blunt, it's going to lose its edge so quickly. 
and I'm going to show you how I mark out the serrations. Quite a fancy serration on this knife. I'm going to show you how I do it. It's a really wicked serration and that has to be done prior to heat treat otherwise you won't be able to do this. It's going to be hand filed so you don't need any special equipment to do this and it's like a two-part serration. We'll do the normalising, we'll do the heat treating, and then we'll do the final grind and we'll, the handle is going to be a really simple setup. Thanks to my patrons, uh, please give it a thumb if you got something from this and uh, if you're not already a sub, a sub of my VegPlot channel please go over and, and give it a sub. Um, I'm on something like 960 subs, some, somewhere around there and I just need a thousand subs because it just opens the channel up to more. You know, you can do more things. I can do little lives. I can do all kinds of things then on that channel. And I can't do that till I get another 40 subs. So thanks, guys. I'll see you soon. Uh, take care of yourselves. Catch you later.